Hi everyone, how are we all doing? This is Elvin Mark, welcome to the art channel. In this episode, we will learn how to sharpen a pencil. Yes, so whether you're using a charcoal pencil or just a regular pencil, note that when you only have this amount exposed, you can only draw this much. That's it. I'm gonna show you how to carefully expose the pencil so that you will have something like that and you will have more surface area to shade especially when you're doing tones okay so let's begin how do I get from something like this to like this all we need would be some pocket blades pen knives or exacto blades and a sandpaper pad or you can use some sandpaper so what I did back then at the Academy was to buy some fine grain sandpaper and I had it attached to a mini chop pots that you'd find at the Euro store dollar store okay so let's uh, do this I prefer using an exacto blade because it's one entire blade and it feels safer uh, when I'm cutting through. Usually I do my shavings in here where it's just neater for the studio. Let's do this on a 4B pencil. So what I will do is to shave out this amount of wood to expose the lead and I'm gonna do it in this manner. I'm not doing this because uh, it can get dangerous and it's you're not in control. Or what I do is I hold or balance the the knife, the blade with my thumb on my left hand. I'm, I'm a right-hander so you can figure that out and I'm drawing, I'm pulling the pencil back. This stays stationary and I pull the pencil back that way I have more control of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take it really nice and slow and uh, if you're doing this for the first time, you're gonna take a while to number one, get used to it and uh, start off slow, nice and easy. Okay, once again, this method is suggested because you have just more control of how much angle you want to dig into or shave off. Okay, so the lead is exposed and I'm gonna keep doing it until I get to see more of the exposed lead. And I'm going real slow. So initially, when you're doing this for the very first time, uh, you may break the lead or you may find it cumbersome because you're not used to doing it but trust me over time this would make more sense so I'm just gonna fast forward this bit So right now the next step is for you to really get this nice gradient of the pencil going this way. So I've noticed many artists doing this quite a bit and then they spin the pencil around as they go around. This is good but if you're not used to it you may snap the lead. What I do is to go along the axis of the pencil while spinning the pencil. That way the pressure is more controlled and uh, chances of you breaking the pencil is a lot less. You can feel the difference if you do it this way against the axis of the pencil and this way along the axis of the pencil. Okay, so you're 
getting this really smooth gradient and uh, when you're done you'll be able to get pretty lines or nice gradient tone like that if you want a straight line you can draw it this way with this you are able to get fine lines like that and you are also able to get smooth tone like that and you are able to mix too thick thin thick thin so I'm gonna use this uh, so it's clearer once again when you have this shaved nicely uh, you're gonna be able to get a very smooth tone or gradient this is the surface of the paper by tilting the pencil as close as possible to the paper you're able to get that as opposed to what we had earlier on when uh, we didn't have that much runway or exposed area from the pencil uh, so once again with this you're able to transit from thick lines to thin lines to thick lines to thin lines the other types of tools that I can sharpen this way would be 2B pencils um, I've got this aqua sketch saw one of these um, architectural pencils I can even use a, a soft pestle or a hard charcoal pestle uh, that comes in rectangular blocks also to note if your pencil gets too short like this one over here you might want to introduce a pencil extender to it all you have to do is just put the pencil in there twist it and uh, you've got more grip more surface area to grip your pencil especially when you're doing details uh, once again with this I'm doing the overhand grip uh, I'm able to draw with my shoulder big lines long lines very controlled uh, whereas if I were to just use my wrist um, to make this arc for example I would be doing it using many many short lines some people call it the hairy line I call it chicken scratches yeah so to be able to have that one smooth nice um, uh, flow of a line uh, you want to be able to use your entire shoulder to move to draw much more control with that for those of us who are interested in learning how to make one of these I'm gonna show it to you right now all you need is just a plain piece of A4 size paper or rectangular paper paper first thing to do is to fold it in half and then the next thing to do is fold it in half again so you get a quarter and then from this corner here one of the corners open it up to form like a, a, a shape of a house with a roof right like that T turn it over to this side and do the same likewise this is a very common thing here in Singapore especially in the hawker centers uh, selling food with bones maybe so like a seafood stall would always serve you food uh, with this so that uh, you can put all your trash all the bones or unwanted pieces into this uh, trash box over here so once you're done with this open it up the other way or close it up this way depending on how you look at it fold in another one time for all four sides so that's one two flip it over three and four yeah. note that I didn't do it neatly the next thing to do is to make some creases on the top 
of the box so it's easier to fold. And then finally, you can open your box. Like that. And voila! You have a little recycle homemade trash box that you can put your uh, pencil shavings in or any unwanted things in there. So that was a sight. <laughs> Going back to the pencil again, um, hopefully we'll be able to get a shape like that uh, for the pencil. And that this shape is like so convex when it's exposed so that we have this amount of uh, angle to to work on and we're able to get a really neat shading type of gradient thing like so yeah as opposed to not having enough lead space also when you're sharpening these the whole idea to make it smooth is so that you don't get edges that are irregular this is the lead again you get e irregular shaped lead and what this does is this touches this touches maybe the the, the paper and you're not gonna get smooth gradients like that when you're doing your tones the trick is to place your pencil uh, not perpendicular but as low parallel to the sandpaper pad as possible while rotating your pencil. This is Alvin Mark here. I hope you uh, learned something or I hope you picked up something from this episode especially if you love drawing with pencils or if you're uh, just starting out and using a lot of pencils. Hopefully this will uh, give you a nudge in the right direction. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Elvin Mark once again on the art channel. Until the next episode, ciao ciao.